Hey, it's Shay Evans. If you have a weak stomach, go eat some pizza. <laughs> so, a lot of people at the very beginning of 2020, when they started talking about COVID-19, you would see on the news, um, like a family member, um, and then the parents talking about, oh, Sonny had COVID, and you know, we miss him so much because he's, you know, stuck in the back part of the house for 15 days. And then the kid comes on and he's talking about it. And you see him looking over here and you see him looking over there. And they look perfectly fine. Well, okay. So I was dating this guy and, you know, everything hit the fan and as far as COVID. They started, you know, closing everything down. We didn't know if they were going to close off the borders of the states. You know, we just didn't know. And we, meaning me, he just laughed at me because I was watching the news. And uh, I was actually really worried about it at the time. So we broke up. And he came back to get his stuff. And he had been working at the hospital. And he... Now, this is this is a theory, and he coughed in my kitchen. That was rude. <laughs> okay, and within like 15 days later, and this still could just be a coincidence, I got sick. But I'm going to say something else that happened. Um, so, the night before I get sick, I went to Walmart. And I, I'm trying to download something. <laughs> and I, I went to Walmart because I had to get cat litter. And I'd forgotten completely that this is the first time I'd been to Walmart. Um, you know, so you, I don't even know if it was like mask mandatory. I don't think it was yet. So I go into the parking lot. And this is in Kentucky. Ashland, Kentucky. And the entire parking lot is like filled with machinery and the lights are like turned off on the exits of the Walmart, which is really weird. And I saw like yellow caution tape. I had to get cat food and I just like sat there and I was like, mm. and I totally did not know that Walmart closed at 830. So I parked my car, get out, walk up to the yellow tape and it says, um, only one person in the family is allowed to enter into the Walmart. Okay. So, it's, you know, from the governor. So, I go in, get my cat food, stand in line, leave. That night, I go to bed. At 3 a.m., I woke up in excruciating abdominal pain. Okay, I'm going to say blackout abdominal pain. My bed is close to where my bathroom is. So I get up to walk to the bathroom and I literally like know I'm blacking out. I feel like I'm going to have seizures and I like hit the floor and I'm laying on my left side. I couldn't move my arms or my legs or my body and I was in so much pain. And I remember thinking, if this is it, it's going to hurt. If I'm going to die, this is going to hurt a lot. So I don't know how long I laid there. And I couldn't move. Like, I literally couldn't move my arms and my legs. And I kind of, like, you know, squished my body up like this and, like, hung myself up over the bathtub with, like, my arms dangling in the tub. And I could, like, turn the water, cold water on my pinky, and it was dark. And I ran like ice cold water over my head for like 50 minutes and I started throwing up, throwing up, but there wasn't like anything coming out. And the pain was like, I was going to have convulsions if I didn't, and there was that heat. And if I didn't have the cold water like rushing over me, um, after 50 minutes, I was able to like kind of crawl back to my bed and like they lay there and I couldn't move. Well, this developed, and I use the words develop, 
day. So the next day, I still can't move. And I had done a, um, a taping the week prior. And I like had this gun that we used in the COVID video as a joke. And I was laying there on my bed going, I can't move. I sent it to my producer. I couldn't move still. Well, by the next day, um, it had developed into the dizziest I have ever been in my life. And I know you're like, oh, she's blonde. Blah, blah, blah. No. Dizzy. Okay. Dizzier than a dilated drip after a hysterectomy with complications. Okay. In the hospital. And it wouldn't go away. Okay. So it developed into dizziness. Then, on day two and a half, it started going into developing into shortness of breath. And I'm talking shortness of breath like you can't chew your food because you can't get any oxygen when you're eating shortness of breath. Okay, literally, like, luckily I had some friends who'd call me and talk to me. And I would just, like, try to stay calm because, like, you, you feel like you're trapped inside your body. Okay, so it kept developing, developing, all right? So you develop into, you know, dizziness, and you develop into shortness of breath. It stays dizzy for days. Like, ah, who in the hell has ever had that? Well, it developed into the next thing. It felt like my lungs had plastic expanding in them, okay? It felt like a shield was expanding in my chest and in my back. Um, I had to like try to get a hold of my doctor. I didn't know to go to the emergency room because I didn't know what they would do. You know, are they just going to like put you on the step up program and, you know, intubate you, put you on the ventilator. You're done for, by the way, if that's the case. Um, I didn't know what to do. So I couldn't get a hold of my doctor's office. Nobody was answering the phone. People started calling my doctor's office because I was putting it on Facebook. Um, so I could, you know, they would alert him somehow. Um, I got in and, you know, he was just like, well, I'm not going to send you for testing because I don't want you to go get the test. I mean, just stuff is weird. Okay. So he knew he was more than likely it's been six days. You know, you made it through. Well, anyway, like day 12, day 15, I still didn't feel okay. I mean, it literally took, I'm going to say at least 15 days for that dizziness to go away. So my whole thought process on this is, did this, no, it's still never downloaded. Lord have mercy. Um, it took 15 days. And from that, I came up with, it's the most synthetic feeling I've ever had in my life. There weren't symptoms that would be contagious. Now, I sound really ridiculous when you've been told that it is contagious, but my theory is when I was laying on the floor and I couldn't move, it was like a rat that came out of a cage, out of like, you know, one of those poison boxes, and it walks out perfectly fine. Boom, it lands on its side and it can't move, and no one thinks about how much pain the rat's in because it's a rat. I felt like a rat, and I felt like I had been poisoned. And I felt like I had been poisoned at the store, you know, the big W, where I got my cat food. Hmm. Okay. There weren't any symptoms that would even be anywhere near contagious, and I didn't run a fever. It was just, it was just bizarre. It was synthetic. That's all I can say. So now, supposedly the prison has a... give you more theories I'll go really fast so from talking to my friends that go to Harvard that are there special from Saudi Arabia who have friends that are in Germany who did the test on the COVID what they did discover in Germany is that the RNA shell of the coronavirus is non viable when taken from surfaces of bed tables doorknobs such, 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 such of patients' bedrooms in the, in the hospital. So it's not everybody's washing everything off. The shell's non-viable. 
Okay, so like, hmm, how, how do we get this? Well, the atomic weight is probably lighter than what you imagine, and more than likely, it is by design. More than likely, it's a bioweapon that was probably designed in a lab because, you know, we've heard who owns the patents on it. Um, no one talks about it because everybody's like, oh, you're a conspiracy theory. You're for Trump. You know what? I'm not for anybody because you know what? If you went to the G20 summit in 2019 with the participants, which Putin wasn't one of them, or I'm pointing again, um, you all did the simulation for COVID, this exact thing. How can you forensically know exactly what's going to happen? You are not God. You are merely just rich people who got to be in the government. So I'm not for anybody, okay? Because you know what? If you volunteer to let America be part of this puppet show, I don't, I don't like any of you, okay? So... You all can make fun of me. I really don't care. But the point is, is that I suffered from something that was the most bizarre thing you could ever imagine. All right? And it is what it is. But I'll tell you what, you don't want it, whatever it is. And more than likely, it was a vial that was cracked and deployed. And they're like, oh, well, oh, that's really a conspiracy. No, it's not, okay, because basically there is a protein, neurotoxic agent, that is probably put into this, like, into a shell. So if you're an innocent, you know, lab worker looking in the microscope, okay, you see an RNA shell of the coronavirus, oh, must be the coronavirus. But if you're a brilliant person in the Wuhan lab, which, you know, we fund, to. Um, you can put lots of things inside. Did you see that? You can put lots of different things inside there, okay? And then when that little shell just melts in the body, what happens? Things develop as they melt, as they go into the body. Hmm. I could just keep on talking forever. This is taking forever to download. Oh.